Have you ever pondered on what really causes that electrifying jolt when you get a shock? Have you ever been caught in a battle of words trying to determine whether it's the voltage or the current that is responsible for the shock? Many a time, this is a question that ignites fiery debates and discussions in the world of electricity, engineering and physics. Today, we're going to explore this fascinating topic in depth, unravel the electrifying truth and venture into the intricacies of voltage and current. Voltage, scientifically measured in a unit known as volts, is essentially the force that propels or drives electric charge through a circuit. If you try to visualize it, think of it as the pressure in a water pipe. Just as the pressure drives the water through the pipe, voltage drives the electric charge through the circuit. It's a powerful force, often unseen, but its presence is undeniable and its effect profound. On the flip side, we have current. Current, which is measured in amperes, is the actual movement of electrons through a conductor. To draw a parallel, it is akin to the flow of water in a pipe. As water flows through a pipe, electrons move through a conductor. It's this movement that we call current. It might seem less daunting than voltage at first glance, but it's just as critical in the grand scheme of things. Voltage has often been labeled as the silent killer. It has the potential to cause serious harm and even fatalities without forewarning. It's the voltage that makes your hair stand on end when you touch a Van de Graaff generator. This is because voltage causes a movement of electrons, a transfer of energy that we often feel as a shock or jolt. However, shifting our focus to current, it's the flow of electrons that can disrupt the normal functioning of the human body. You might have come across the phrase, it's not the volts that kill you, it's the amps. This phrase points to the fact that current has the power to cause muscles to contract, stop the heart from functioning and lead to serious injuries or even death. But don't let this you toward believing it is a straightforward voltage versus current battle. The real danger lies in both and they often go hand in hand. The combination of voltage and current determines the severity of an electrical shock. Understanding Ohm's law helps us see that resistance plays a critical role too. It's like the resistance in a water pipe. The higher the resistance, the less current can flow through. In the world of electricity, the balance between voltage, current and resistance is a delicate balance. This balance determines whether the result is a harmless tingling sensation or a shock that could potentially be life-threatening. So, the next time you think about the jolt you feel when you get a shock, remember it's a complex interplay of voltage, current and resistance. Now consider the welding machine. It operates at low voltage but high current. Despite its high current, you can touch the welding machine without getting a shock. How does that work? It's because low voltage alone can't penetrate the human body to allow current flow. The human body resistance varies from 1000 to 10,000 ohm. To overcome this resistance, voltage should be enough to penetrate the body. As we unravel the mysteries of voltage and current, it becomes clear that the real danger isn't always in one parameter alone. The welding machine serves as a perfect example highlighting the importance of considering both voltage and current, along with other factors like resistance. And there you have it. Voltage and current may be at the heart of the debate, but understanding their interaction and the context in which they operate is crucial. If you have any electrifying experiences or insights to share, drop them in the comments below. Stay electrified and stay curious. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Stay charged, everyone.